Coach's Corner is brought to you by Capital Investment Advisory Services. Hello and welcome into another episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Mitch Stewart. This morning I'm joined by Rail Yard Dogs head coach Dan Bremner. Dan, thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course, Mitch. As you can tell, a little bit of a different setting for us, a special edition of Coach's Corner. We're on the road in Peoria, Game 1 of the President's Cup Finals coming up later this week. But before we get too far along looking at this week's upcoming matchups, let's take a look back at this past weekend. You all had Huntsville in the President's Cup semifinals. You're able to beat them in Game 1 by a score of 5-3. to three. The offense really comes out rolling in that game against SPHL goaltender of the year, Hunter Vorba. Then in Game 2 on Saturday night, it's really the defense is turning to step up. You guys get a big shutout to clinch the series sweep. What did you see from that series against Huntsville from your guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was really a tale of two different games. Um, the first game, both sides, not just us, but both sides were uh, putting the puck in the net. Um, you know, arguably we had uh, two more goals in that, too, with a couple quick whistles. But um, that, that kind of just speaks to uh, resilience of our team right now. Um, we're just, you know, they're, they're just playing consistent hockey. They're playing dogs hockey. And... Regardless of you know penalties being called, of uh, maybe quick whistles, goals coming back, you know those are things that you know can throw off a team. Um, and and our guys are showing some really good resilience and just getting back on the ice and, and playing hockey. Um, the second night, um, it was very clear both teams felt the the uh, pressure of the game, and, and we were we we're playing really really tight, uh, particularly in the first period and. Uh, you know, to get that uh, first goal, and, and that's the way it goes sometimes when teams are playing really, really good defense is, is kind of a, a poor angle shot from uh, from Hepner, and, and it, it finds a way to squeak through. Um, and we rode that, and, uh, you know, we locked down the defense, and, and uh, we did get a couple more scoring chances that uh, obviously would have been nice to get that cushion, but it was awesome to see our guys play in a um, really tight game like that and play that full 60-minute effort. Well, despite Austin Rodovich playing the third most minutes throughout the SPHL regular season among goaltenders, it kind of been Sammy Bernard who had the hot hand at the start of the President's Cup playoff run. He gets injured in game one against Huntsville, and Austin comes in and plays really well, gets the <clears> win, <throat> and makes 18 out of 20 saves in that game one victory. And then Saturday night, boy, he was sensational. Austin Rodovich gets the 36-save shutout. What do you have to say about the way that he kind of stepped up into that role uh, and, and went against that adversity to get both of those wins in game one and two? I think uh, the whole team, myself inclu included, are just uh, you know happy for Rody and, and proud of him. You know, uh, we all know what he's been capable of, and it's been an up and down year for the entire team. And at, at times, he kind of took uh, the brunt of that through uh, through a bit of a skid for our team. So um, to see him have that effort and, and get rewarded for it, and uh, the confidence in our guys seeing him back there play that way, way again was unbelievable. I mean, it gives us. Uh, you know, a great option going forward with, with both goalies playing really, really well. But, uh, you know, Rody really deserved that after uh, the work that he's put in all year. And like I said, having that kind of up and down year to be able to, to step in in a, in a crucial time for us and, and uh, play well, but the team rally around him too and make sure we gave him, the guys gave him every opportunity to have a successful night. So you talk <clears> about <throat> the belief around that locker room and the belief in Austin, Rodebush or Sammy Bernard, whoever it might be. It's kind of, you know, a big 180 from maybe where it was back six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Where do you kind of feel like the mood of the locker room is now that you guys have gone through number one and number two and are preparing for the franchise's first President's Cup final appearance? Um, the, you know, the mood in the room is good. Uh, you know, obviously energy is good right now. We were on the ice uh, yesterday for the first time here in Peoria, and, and the guys are buzzing around, hooting, hollering. It's, it's, a, it's a good vibe right now. Um, you know, what, what we're trying to talk about is just uh, that everything stays consistent. You know, it doesn't matter who we're playing, um, number one, number two, whatever, Peoria, whoever. Um, it's, about, it's about us and the process that we've had in the, in the last, uh, you know, not even just playoffs, but the last, uh, you know, six weeks, two months, uh, been playing really, really good hockey. And, and the, the focus has to be on consistency in that. Um, every shift going out there and playing the same way, regardless of the opponent, regardless of the score. You know, we've had a, a bit of a motto the last little while of uh, zero zero mentality. Whether we're up, down, whatever, it's a zero zero mentality. We try to play with that, that intensity of a zero zero game, and, and that focus of that as well. You guys get Peoria in a best of five series here for the Presidents Cup Finals games one and two in Peoria before you guys head back to Roanoke. What are you expecting from the Rivermen from the times that you played them this season? What can you kind of take from those matchups, and maybe what are you looking forward to that could be different this time around in the Presidents Cup Finals? 
Well, I mean, the difference is simple. We're a completely different team than we were uh, last time we saw Peoria. Um, but what we're expecting from them is that they're a very good team. They're well-rounded. they got a good amount of skill, speed, uh, good, I think better physicality than we saw at both uh, Knoxville and uh, Huntsville, which is going to be a new, kind of a new challenge for us uh, this round. Um, but expecting them to come out with a ton of jam. You know, they're, they're uh, get, get that uh, first two games at home, uh, play in a five-game series. I'm pumped about it. I think our guys are pumped about it where – you know, you don't really get that feel of a, a true playoff series sometimes in a, in a best of three. So the five game, you know, you're, you're, there's going to be some uh, really good battles out there. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I, you know, obviously Peoria is a, a very strong team. And I think uh, we've been playing a, a, as a very strong team as well. I think it's going to be a, just a battle of two uh, very good teams. And it's going to come down to, I hope it comes down to, um, you know, whichever team's going to be playing most consistently uh, for, for 60 minutes of play. Hopefully, uh, you know, the ref doesn't become a factor either way. And, uh, you know, they, they let us uh, kind of play it out. And you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see these two teams go at it. We're really excited <clears throat> to watch you guys play as well. I know the fans are excited to have you all back at the Berglund Center for Monday, May 2nd, Game 3, and then, of course, on May 3rd, if necessary, that Tuesday night, we mm -hmm. would play there for Game 4 as well. What's kind of your lasting message out there to both the fans that are watching this that are already planning on coming and maybe for the people that are checking this out that might not be sure if they want to come out yet for that Monday night, Game 3? Sure. Well, I mean, our home record through the regular season and then you see our, uh, our home play over the course of these playoffs, it's uh, it's no doubt that uh, our team elevates our game uh, in front of our crowd, and, and our crowd's a big big factor in it. Um, that uh, last one on Thursday night against Huntsville, we uh, you know had I think it was about three thousand, but it was deafening in that building, and, and the guys knew it, and, and they they played to it. So um, you know everybody come on out. I know it's not the ideal nights with the uh, Monday Tuesday games, but uh, grab your friends, invite everybody. Let's let's uh, let's pack the house and. Uh, you know, we're going to be putting on a big show for him, so uh, we need those uh, that, that volume behind us. Yeah, tell your boss you're sick, right? You can't make it in Tuesday that's right. morning. That's right. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for this episode of Coach's Corner. Dan, thanks so much for joining me this thanks morning. Much. All right, Rail Yard Dogs fans, game one and two taking place this Thursday and Friday night out west in Peoria. You can check out the Bud Light Watch Party series going on at Club 611 over at the Berglund Center. Gates will open at 7 p.m. Eastern both nights on Thursday and Friday. Grab your friends, grab your family, and come out and watch the Rail Yard Dogs with fellow Dogs fans. And then game three will be back home at the Berglund Center Monday, May 2nd, 7.05 puck drop. We hope to see you then. Thank you so much for watching this, and have a great rest of your day. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Capital Investment Advisory Services.